What's up, Responsible Day Traders? Today is Monday, May 22nd, 2023. I am Lindsay Duff, and this is Responsible Day Trading. I know I didn't have a video last week. We have just been busy, busy, busy. So I may miss a week or so here and there just while we're really working on uh, updating the curriculum. I know we talked, been talking about that for a long time, but we had to take a huge pause from updating that curriculum. Now we're back to game on and hopefully going to have that done and rolled out within uh, probably about the next six weeks. And at the same time, we're working on creating these videos in Spanish. I've gotten a lot of people reaching out to me and asking, you know, do we have help in Spanish? And we have been working on it. So uh, we will have the curriculum in Spanish. We will have people who can help coach you in Spanish. And I am just, I'm extremely excited about it. I'm looking forward to it, to be able to reach and help more people. Okay, so let's talk about what we came here to talk about, and that is the market. So for today, um, I'm kind of excited, you know, watching what happened last week, that market pulled right back down to the EMAs on the daily chart, pushed right off of that, and is right there just hanging out in that area of resistance. And so now we have to look and say, do we have the strength to break through here? Or is this, you know, just where it's going to stop and push us back to the downside. And so we're going to have to look at the signals around. We're going to have to see what they say and we'll figure that out together. All right. So the first thing that we want to do is guys, we want to bring up the news. All right. So we're going to head on over here to responsibledaytrading.com. We're going to go to news and then we're going to go to market news. So when we're looking at the market news, ooh, we got a lot going on this week. Once again, nothing for today, tomorrow. Before the market opens, about an hour and a half before the market opens, we can see we start having news 15 minutes after the market opens and then 30 minutes after the market opens. We've got some high impact news tomorrow. So that could be an interesting morning. Uh, Wednesday, whoo, here we go, guys. Wednesday morning, an hour after market open, we've got crude oil inventories. And then at one o'clock central time, we got FOMC and we know that can get a little bit crazy sometimes. So that is the one that I pay most attention to and I make sure I am not in usually, usually 30 minutes before and I kind of watch it the rest of the day. If it's slow moving, then I may go ahead and participate after that. But otherwise, I'm just going to wait till it slows down because sometimes it can pop so huge that it might just pop right through your stop and keep on going. Uh, Thursday, we've got some pre-market an hour before the market opens here. And then half an hour after the market opens here, we've got pending home sales. And then Friday is all pre-market. So it looks like it could be a really interesting week. You know, not just because of that, but because of what we got going on right here. So first we're going to look at the daily chart and let me just emphasize this particular chart just a little bit more. What I want to look at is what happened last week. We pulled down right into this area of the EMA and what happened? We couldn't break to the downside with the BBs. We couldn't break back below it with the price. It told us we were going to experience more up. Now, what's happened here, and I'm going to close this up just a little bit so we can get just a little more clear picture of this spot right in here. We pulled up to that area of that resistance that we have been looking at for quite some time to break through. We did get a flag reversal bar right here. Now, the third bar in the pattern, we'd want to see the closes start to happen down towards the bottom to anticipate this to push down more. We do see that we are outside of the Bollinger Bands here. But the the real stressor is that I had to really pull that open to see that we were above that Bollinger Band. So whenever we're looking at these areas and we want to see does it have true strength or not, we'd really like to see it break above and start to pull away from the Bollinger Bands, pull away from the previous BB to recognize that as strength to the upside. Currently, what's happening is we can see as we've reached this high right in here, what's happening is we've gotten these higher highs. The MACDs are currently leading lower and we're at a fairly strong area of resistance. So I'm not going to try and break through that area of resistance all by myself. What I typically like to do is look for a bit of a pullback, maybe somewhere back in this area. And then if the MACDs stay blue and outside, then I'm going to have a little more faith in it going to the upside and breaking through here. But with being that close at the area, we do have a lot of opportunities on our smaller charts. But typically what I like to see is a breakthrough and a pullback. 
we'll get a little more into that as we continue on. All right, so here we have the 28657. Now the 28657 is our next largest chart. We really like to just kind of keep in mind what the overall trend is doing. Right now, we do have direction to the upside on the daily chart. We do have direction to the upside on the 28,657. We can see we had been above the zero line. We've been above the EMAs. Now, if we get back below these EMAs and back below the zero line, then we're going to really anticipate this to attempt to push down kind of like what we saw back in here. But currently, our direction is to the upside. We're in areas of the EMAs that we're trying to hold, but we see a bit of a wedge forming. We can see the lower highs here happening, the higher lows there happening. So we've got a little bit of a wedge and we've got this area of resistance directly above us and a fairly strong area of support directly below us. So we wanna see which one's gonna win out, right? Um, can we take moves in between that? Yeah but we wanna be really, really cautious as we pull back into areas that could produce a bounce. I mean, we do have something along the lines of, you know, 18 points or so between these areas, which can be traded, but we don't wanna try and force an area to hold. We wanna read what it's saying and let us know that we have more comfortability taking a long or a short trade at that time. So let's look at our trading charts. Ooh. Now we can see it's really attempting to make this push back down. Now let's go ahead and start off with our 10,946. I like to read it like a book, left to right. So we've got our bigger chart here, the 10,946. Now, when I say this, I'm not gonna leave my 28,627 or my daily chart open the whole time. I'm gonna have those set aside. So my biggest picture I'll be looking at is typically the 10,946. And the 10,946 will give me a little bit of an overall of what's happening here. So 10,946, now we had divergences to the upside as that pushed up, but we also can see a major retracement divergence to the downside possibility, maybe just to pull us right back into this area to bounce off of the zero line and the Bollinger Band and push up. But I'm not gonna try and be presumptuous. I'm not going to try and force anything to happen here. I'd like to watch it and see it happen. So we've got a pretty good area of support here. We've got a pretty strong area of resistance. Is this gonna be a W pivot to push it to the upside? If it was, it looks like it's trying to fail now. So we'd have to see this slow down and start to push up here. Um, are we gonna see a wedge continue to form in these areas and just get tighter and tighter and tighter until it breaks out in one direction or the other? These are all things that we have to think about as we're going through these charts and as we're waiting for our trades in the day. Uh, so if we're looking at the 10,946 currently, the direction is to the upside. We did pull away from the EMAs and from the zero line here. We'd like to see it push down further, but then we got right back above the EMAs and the zero line here. So are we going to see this roll off and continue up? Are we going to see this push to the downside? Hmm. If I'm looking at what's happening on these charts, I'm looking at the strength trying to push down, but much, much higher in both the price and the MACDs here. We have BBs starting to turn a little bit lighter here. So either way it goes, I think they're going to, it's going to be a little bit of a fight to get to one side or the other. Because right now, what's happening? Just look at the 1597. We are above the EMAs, we're below them. We're above the EMAs, we're below them. We are above, below, extremely above, extremely below, just breaking back above, just breaking back below. So number one, we know we don't wanna use this area as a strong area of resistance to push the market back down right now because it's also pulling right back into a strong area of support. So whenever we start to get things like a wedge, if you want to try and trade that, you have to trade it from the edges. And I'm just really not trusting any of these edges right now because it's just getting tighter and tighter. So we see that the 1597, the direction has moved itself to the downside. We broke away from the EMAs. We pulled down lower and closed here, but they're weakening. 
the MACDs are weakening, the price is struggling to go through. If we look at the 28, uh, if we look at the 233, direction has shifted to the downside. We made a lower pivot, now we're making a bit of a higher pivot than that previous pivot. Mm. Just looking at what I can see here, it does look like it's going to attempt to make the move to the downside, but that's because I'm looking at the fact that we're below the EMAs, we're below the zero line, we had a strong push here, we had a weak retracement, and we may see another strong push to the downside. But I'm just going to, it's 949, so the market's been open for about an hour and a half. And so far, we can see it hasn't moved a whole lot. This is you know, 530 in the morning, this was Friday. We can still see that the market hasn't moved quite a lot right now, and we're still trapped between these areas. So we wanna see the possibility to break out on one side or the other. What would we wanna to see to do that? We'd probably wanna get back below this area, pull back and push, or we wanna get back above these areas. And then I wouldn't say necessarily we gotta get back above these areas, but we gotta see a reason for it to slow down, roll up, have any reason to go to the upside. Kind of like what we're seeing now, it's starting to try and slow down and roll up, but are we gonna pull right back into here and push down? We know that a lot of what we do here is a waiting game. Waiting to see more clarification in what direction that's going. We don't wanna just jump in and hope that it's going in a particular direction. I mean, like I said, I do see more of an opportunity for this to push down than to push up at this moment, but we do have areas that could hold it up as soon as it pushes down. So you'd have to be pretty quick on the draw, taking these shorts and be ready when it tells you that it has the opportunity to slow down especially as it's pulling into that bottom Bollinger Band here. The BBs had gotten just a little bit lighter and uh, such there, but you'd have to nail your entry somewhere back in here so that you don't have too much risk on it and you watch it. And as soon as it begins to slow down, you're pulling in your risk. You're staying more in tune with what's happening instead of just hoping that it pushes in that direction so that you can just make sure you're making good decisions, right? Make sure that you are staying in focus of what's happening and not what you hope happens. So yeah, you could put your risk right back in here and if it doesn't follow through, you at least have a little bit of profit locked in. Otherwise, you know, if you leave your risk all the way back here, hoping with the area of support that we've reached here a few times with the fact that we've been whippy back and forth above and below these zero lines and these EMAs, I would wanna make sure that if I haven't broken out of that area that we're not gonna see a nice steep pullback really, really quick after that. All right, my friends, that is going to wrap it up. Uh, you know, pretty soon we're gonna start talking about scholarship opportunities here. I know it's not until October, but we really want to give as many people a possibility to get involved with it as possible. So once that starts, uh, once we're ready for that, we're gonna let you guys know. But I just want you to keep it in mind that we do have those opportunities and if it's something that you think that you would be a good candidate for, then um, just keep your eye out for whenever we're gonna start putting out the information about the scholarship. It won't be until October when we make the decision of who's going to be our new scholarship students, but you can start thinking about the path that you wanna take in order to get there. So, all right, my friends, that's gonna be it. I hope everybody has a wonderful week. If you have questions, please, please, please reach out to us. We are so happy to help you out and it gives us so much joy to see you move in the right direction and you know just be able to give you some guidance. So um, I hope everybody has an amazing week. And as always, you know that I look forward to catching you on the profitable side.